بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی بگن ان دا نیم آف دا گاڈ ہوز مرسی از پروفاؤنڈ ہوز کائنڈنیس از فور ایور وی آر ٹرائنگ ٹو لرن دی لینگویج آف دا قرآن اینڈ وی ڈو اٹ بائی ریپیٹنگ دا کانسیپٹس مور اینڈ مور سو دیٹ وی آر ایبل ٹو گیٹ یوز ٹو دیم اینڈ آبویسلی اٹس آل اباؤٹ پریکٹس یو ٹاک اباؤٹ اینی لینگویج اف یو وانٹ ٹو ماسٹر اٹ اٹ فری ہیز ٹو بی اے پروسیس آف ڈوئنگ اٹ اوور اینڈ اوور اگین If you would kindly recall, we have as yet done uh, the two Arabi forms uh, uh, cases of uh, Rafa, nominative case, and uh, Jar, uh, uh, genitive case. Uh, we have not touched upon, uh, uh, unless some um, very brief uh, introduction of Nasab, we have not as yet talked about the uh, Nasab Arabi form, which is the accusative. So let's start off with it. Uh, nasab is the accusative case. Um, I did not mention it before, as you would kindly recall, because I mentioned that when it comes to the question of Rafa or Jar, we have a limited number of possibilities. In Rafa, there are four. In Jar, there are two. Uh, wherein uh, we talk about those examples, those categories, and we have done with uh, the understanding of why nouns take rafa and jar forms. When it comes to nasab, the possibility is much bigger. There are a far greater number of uh, different reasons why a noun appearing in a sentence would take this uh, accusative form, uh, accusative case of uh, nasab. Uh, You don't have to be uh, reminded of uh, uh, the appearance of nasab. Uh, you already know that it's not very different from jar. But just to recap, uh, if we are talking about uh, the uh, example of the noun alim, uh, when it came, when it takes uh, the form of nasab, it would be aliman or al alima, alimaini or al alimaini, alimina or العالمين عالمة or العالمة or العالمة عالمتين or العالمتين and عالمات or العالمات You've already done it. Now we are going to start talking about uh, the different reasons why when a noun appears in a sentence it takes uh, uh, the Arabic form of uh, nasab, the accusative case. Uh, by far, uh, the most important uh, and the most frequently appearing reason for a nasab, uh, a noun to be in the form of nasab, is what is called maf'ool, or it is also called maf'ool bihi, which is uh, the object in a noun. When you have a sentence wherein you have a verb, you would uh, invariably have a subject and an object. I say invariably because there are certain cases wherein you do not need uh, a noun which is to take the position of uh, uh, the object. But in very many cases, most cases, it is what you do need. Uh, going by the example we've already done, dharaba is a verb. And mind you, we've not started talking about verbs. But dharab has a verb which we need to employ here because we are to talk about a nasab now. And zaidun is the uh, uh, subject and uh, khalidun is uh, the object. And uh, dharab is a verb because it's a uh, subject, zaid is taking the form of uh, rafa and uh, Khalidan is the one who was beaten up, is the one that has taken the position of an object, and therefore it is in the nasab form. Um, that is as simple as that. And as I said, that's the most frequent, frequently uh, appearing reason for a noun to take the form of uh, nasab. Uh, we move a little further, and uh, we uh, talk about another a verb which by its nature is such that it does not 
desire, require, uh, the need for one object. Instead, it requires two objects. Uh, such is the nature of certain nouns. So, for example, uh, you say that uh, Zad beat up Khalid, which is what we've done here. Zad is uh, the subject and Khalid is the object and beat up is uh, the verb. In Arabic, Dharaba, beat up, Zaidun Zaid, Khalidun Khalid. However, we do also have uh, sentences where we say Zaid showed Khalid. What did he show him? The masjid. Now you have a case of, of sentence where uh, Zad, uh, the subject, is in need of uh, two nouns as objects because of the nature of the verb. He is showing somebody something. The somebody who is being shown is uh, an object, object one, and what is be he is being shown is object number two. So, in Arabic, what we will do is that we will use the verb ara, which is showed. Who showed? Zaid. Whom? Khalid. What? Al Masjid. So, the Arab of Zaid would be obviously Zaidun. Ara Zaidun. Zaid showed whom Khalidan that is the object what al masjida masjid so what I'm trying to show is that masjid which is the second of the two objects in the sentence is also going to take mafur is also going to take nasab the accusative uh, case uh, this again is maful behi. Uh, it is called maful behi ani, the second object. Now, there's one thing more that I would want to uh, introduce before I take a step further towards uh, understanding uh, whatever we have done as yet. And that is, that remember that we talked about. Uh, uh, naib file, which uh, was uh, one of the concepts that we discussed, the subject of uh, the passive. Uh, and we mentioned that naib file, the subject of the passive, whenever it appears, it is uh, in the Arabic form of rafa, which is the nominative case. Uh, now, naib file comes when uh, there is a verb which is uh, uh, in the passive form. Normally, verbs appear in the active form, uh, he beat up. But then obviously, sometimes you also say, he was beaten up. Uh, and we've already discussed that, you know, when you are talking about uh, passive verbs, you don't talk about uh, the subject of the active verb. You talk about the object of the sentence wherein you have an active verb, and that object in a, ver in a sentence where you have a passive verb used, it becomes naib file, uh, it, is, it is actually a subject which is uh, uh, representing, you know, kind of uh, uh, the passive, which is subject of the passive. Now, we move a step further and we do this. Uh, the verb ara he showed has to now be made into a passive verb. And as I said, that, you know, when it comes to the passive verb, it is simple. It, is, it takes only one form appearance. Whether it's ara, whether it's zaraba, whether it's qatala, zaraba would become zoreba. Qatala when it would be in the passive form would be qutila. And ara would be in passive form uriya. So, Uriya was shown. Uriya was shown. Well, 
sounds a little strange, but obviously in Arabic, the, word com the verb comes first. We don't talk about uh, Zaid because Zaid is the uh, subject of uh, the sentence which uh, has an active verb. Uh, the passive verb sentence would need Khalid, which is the Naib file, the subject of the passive. And it would be therefore in the form of Rafa. I hope you recall it because Rafa is something we've already talked about. I'm not saying that you would not forget, but what I'm saying is that it's a good idea that what you've already done should be there in your mind. And, you know, when we practice, uh, we keep recapitulating and therefore reviving uh, our memory and, and, and making it stronger. The reason why I am talking about it is that Oriya Khalidun is followed by Al Masjid. Khalid was shown Masjid. This Masjid is going to again be Masjida, Al Masjida. It's going to again take the form of Nasab. It's going to be accusative case. So, what I'm saying is that when you talk about Nasab and you talk about Maful Bihi, uh, maful bihi would always take the form of nasab, accusative case. Uh, likewise, uh, maful bihi sani, the second of the two, the second of the objects, is also going to think, take the same form. And when it comes to the question of a sentence where you have a passive verb, uh, the object of the active verb sentence is going to take the form of arabi, form of rafa. It would become a nominative case. But the second object, the second of the two objects, in the active verbs sentence, when it comes to the passive verb, uh, uh, the uh, second object would continue to remain in the nasab form. In other words, it's going to be accusative case. And that's about it. You know, you have covered uh, the most important nasab as far as uh, uh, the uh, uh, frequency of appearance is concerned. Now what I am going to do is what shall I say is the fruit, is the end result, is the outcome, is what we expect from uh, what we are trying to do. And that is uh, an ability to appreciate and understand uh, the Quranic text. I am not saying you know, it is going to be uh, asking for a little too much that we understand everything that is there in the Quran on the basis of the very little that we have done. Well, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the idea of understanding the Quran through the Arabic that we have, uh, the Arabic lessons that we learn, uh, the only way out is to just plunge into it, practice it as much as you can. The more you practice, the more you will be able to uh, master. And I tell you one of the reasons why I am uh, encouraging you to do it is that the only way you're going to learn Arabic is that you really get motivated. And the only motivation that we have is that we learn the Quran. Uh, you go into the Quran, you look at, the, you look at the, uh, some of the principles that we have already done and their application in the Quran. You look at the translation and you figure out as to whether you are identifying a few things that you've already learned and you are looking at them in the text the way they have been used and reconfirming what you've already learned, well, it gives you confidence and it gives you a special kind of uh, satisfaction, happiness. So I am going to now do, you might say this is over ambitious, but why not? Let's try to do uh, the most famous verse of the Quran, Ayatul Kursi. Uh, we start with Allahu. La ilaha illa hawal hai yul qayyum. Allah, there is no God, there is no deity except Him. He is living and the one who is sustaining everybody else. Now, what I'm trying to do is that let's look at what we have already done, which we find here uh, mentioned, uh, expressed. Allah is a noun and it has a rafa. 
uh, obviously we have to figure out as to why. You know, Allah here is the starting point of the sentence. Anything else that has been mentioned in the sentence is actually uh, the uh, information that is being provided, provided about, uh, about Allah. So Allah is uh, the muqtada, the what we call the inquitive, the starter, the beginner. And the rest is the khabar, which is the enunciative, which is the information. It is not exactly in the same manner, the khabar, that uh, we are used to. Because uh, uh, we know that khabar is also in the form of rafa. But khabar is in rafa form when it is in the form of a simple noun. Here, obviously, it's a pretty longish expression. But the one thing that we know is, and which really should give, them some, some, give us some feeling of comfort, is that Allah is rafa, and we know that because it's muqtada, it's uh, inquitive. Uh, we move on. La ilaha illahu. You know, it's, it's important that we, <clears throat> we also know what we don't know. Because uh, once we are able to figure out as to uh, why uh, there are certain things that we don't know, uh, we will have them there in our mind. Uh, and uh, we look for answers to the question as to why uh, there are certain uh, noun whose uh, Arab we don't understand. So, la ilaha, ilaha is most certainly in the form of nasab. We don't know exactly why it's in the form of nasab. And mind you, there's a question that there should be a question in your mind. Ilah is a noun in the form of nasab and it is taking one, one harakat, uh, one symbol. It's not in tanmeen, despite it not having an alif lam before it. Allah is, obviously, is alif lam. Allah is ilahun preceded by alif lam. Uh, because of uh, the use of it over a period of time, obviously, it's one of the most frequently used words in Arabic. Uh, it became from al-ilah to Allah. But ilah, which is uh, the common noun, uh, without an alif lam, is coming in the form of a nasab with only one harakat. Just keep in mind. Huwal hayyul qayyum. This is a pronoun. We have not as yet talked about pronouns. And uh, these are the nouns. Both are in uh, the form of rafa. Huwa. He is al hay living, al qayyum sustaining. Uh, you know, as yet we don't know this pronoun, but we most certainly know that these two nouns are in the form of rafa. And if you look at the sentence, the simple translation of the sentence, al hay al qayyum, he is the living, uh, the sustaining, the one who is causing everybody else to live, to to sustain. Uh, this obviously is the khabar. Uh, it's uh, the, uh, the information about Hua, and it is the enunciative. That is, he, Allah, he is the one who is living, he is the one who is uh, Al-Qayyum, the sustaining. And uh, this is the Khabar. Obviously, you need to have this question in mind, and I'm not going to answer it right now. Why is it that despite it being Khabar, it uh, is uh, uh, taking Alif Lam? It's uh, not common noun. It's proper noun. Proper noun, by the way, is called marfa, and common noun is called nakira. So why is uh, why is al hay and al qayyum not nakira, which is uh, the common noun? Instead, it's marfa. Why is it marfa? Because it's taking alif lam uh, before uh, the word uh, begins. Uh, well, what it means is therefore that the rule that uh, the muqtada is going to be in the form of uh, proper noun. It has to be marfa. And uh, the uh, khabar has to be in the form of common noun. Uh, nakara is not a rule which always applies. There are exceptions, right? So we move on. Allahu la ilaha illahu al ahiyul qayyum. The next part of uh, the famous verse is. La ta'khuzuhu. La ta'khuzuhu. Sinatun. Wala noun. Now, uh, you know, we've not done these type of, uh, of uh, verbs, but 
by the very translation you would know by going through it that it's a, it's another verb la ta khuzuh he is not overcome by who again is a pronoun like hua is a pronoun we talked about pronoun later but right now la ta khuzuh it does not he is not overtaken by he is not overwhelmed overcome by sanatum wala now neither sleep nor slumber any form of doze uh now both these words are in the form of uh, uh rafa uh, and uh, obviously uh, the nominative case has to be has to be justified and i i i hope that you have almost reached at the reason it's because ta khuzuhu overcomes or doesn't overcome is a verb and these are both the doers of that verb these are both files of the verb uh and that is why they are taking this form uh you know we know that file is is, is subject uh whenever you have a verb it has to have a subject and uh, when the subject appears sometimes it would not appear it would be implied but when it appears in in the text it has always got to take the form of uh arab of rafa it has always got to be in other words in nominative case la ta khuzuhu sinatun wala naum lahu for him ma whatever is fi samawati wal ard for him lam is actually one of the particles uh, huruf uh it's a harkat which is uh, huruf jar one of the harf jar but here it's not causing the kind of change which huruf jar caused by giving the immediately succeeding uh, noun uh, the harkat of uh, the arab of jar why we'll talk about it later as i said uh, to know that you don't know certain things in, in itself really uh, an important part of learning ma whatever fi samawat is actually whatever is in the heavens now fi if you would recall is one of the particles uh, one of the huruf e jar which means in whatever is there in the heavens and therefore as samawat is has taken jar it has one symbol of jar and not two because it's preceded by as samawat uh you notice that as samawat is not actually giving you the sound of al but wal ard is giving you the sound of al this is because there are two types of letters in arabic there are some which are shamsi and there are others which are called qamari shamsi uh, letters huruf are the ones which when they are preceded by alif lam uh, the alif lam the the lam is silent so you would say ash shams not al shams but when it comes to qamari huruf letters uh, when a word beginning by a qamari harf a qamari alphabet is preceded by alif lam then you uh, bring out the sound of lam like al qamar or like al ard how do we know well it's it's there in arabic already known it's uh, in the tradition the convention of the arabs lahu ma fis samawati wal ard lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard oh everybody remembers ayat al kursi i can't get it wrong lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard so this fi is repeated here and al ard obviously is going to take a jar again because fi is a harf jar and uh, there is only one because of alif lam manzal lazi who is there manzal lazi who is there yashfau that can intercede aindahu before him now man we have not discussed it zal lazi we well, don't know very much about it yashfau is a verb intercedes or will shall intercede in the who before him the only thing is that this inda which is a which is a noun has a nasab at the top of it uh, we need to figure out later why this nasab appears when it comes to inda 
And why is it one and not two, despite the fact that Inda is not preceded by Arif Lam? Manzal Lazi Yashfa'u Indahu Illa, except. You know, there are certain words which are repeated so many times, so often, that you would know their meanings. Illa is one of them. Illa bi izni. Except by his leave, his will. Now, this B is one of the huruf jar. And it has actually given jar to izn. So this iznihi, this, this jar, is because of B. Now the question is, the question is, why does it have one uh, harakat and not two? Uh, you know why? Because it is mudaf. Now mudaf of what? Mudaf of he. Izn means sanction. Iznihi means his sanction. Zad's house his sanction. Again, the same, uh, you know, mudaf, mudaf ilay, wherein we talked about the fact that, uh, you know, it's the case of uh, the possessive case. Uh, you know, there is a, an apostrophe and uh, we are talking about a uh, governing noun and uh, the governed noun. And bi uh, is uh, this is jar, but uh, only one harakat. Yeshvahu in the huilla bizni. Yalamu. He knows. Again, a verb. Ma baina, whatever is in between aidihim, their hands, that is before them, right in front of them, wama khalfahum, and what is behind them. Yalamu ma baina aidihim wama khalfahum. Here, you know, again, this aidi is there. And uh, Baina is there. Uh, okay, I would say that as yet we don't know much about it. Uh, although some of you might try to figure it out, I'll just leave it up to you. Mama Khalfahum. Khalfa again is a noun which has come uh, with a nasab, and we've not as yet talked about the reason for it. But uh, it has uh, one harakat, which is again because it is mudaf. You know, it's uh, mudaf, and uh, as I said, Mudaf is always uh, with one harakat, despite it not having an alif lam before it, and it's the governing noun. Wala yuhituna. Wala yuhituna. And they cannot take charge of or lay hands on or embrace bishayin anything. Now this yuhituna is noun or is a verb. We can't do anything about it. We don't know about much about it. But bishay in be has given shay jar. Wala yuhituna bishayim. It's a jar because of be. Min ilmihi. Wala yuhituna bishayim. Min ilmihi. They cannot uh, possess, take anything min ilmihi. From his knowledge, ilmihi. Now, this again, ilm is getting a jar because of min, and one because of uh, because of it being mudaf. Illa, except bima sha'a, except for what he uh, would desire, he would permit. Now, be again is a harfi jar is not giving ma any jar. Why? There's something we're going to talk about later in the next session, inshallah. We'll start from where we had left in this Ayatul Kursi and uh, we'll complete it and we'll then proceed further. May the Almighty enable us to under understand his book as best as we can.